Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, that's my chair, and there's probably some dogs and golf outside, and I'm here checking out Sonic Forces. Why the hell did I choose to buy Sonic Forces? Well, not the most intelligent move I've ever made, but I liked what I played at the demo, so I thought I might give this one a shot. And it wasn't actually that expensive, like $60 Australian isn't a massive thing here. I mean, it is a fair bit of money, but it's cheaper than most retail games, so I figured, why the hell not? It's also something like $45 US, so it is a bit under the usual retail price. There's not much to see in the options modes, but as you can see, if you play on normal mode, I won't even bother to record your scores, so I don't even see... <laughs> I don't even see the point of going down um, to normal, honestly. You can also turn on, off and on a couple of things here, and notably you can change the voice language to any one of six different languages, which is actually kind of neat. There is also episode Shadow, I was able to get this for free when the game came out on the Australian eShop, e but I don't know if that'll be free anymore, and you've also got a theatre here that'll let you play some of the cutscenes, but if we don't see one or two of them while we're playing the actual game, I can always come back here and show them off. As far as I'm aware, the game's got nothing in the way of multiplayer modes or any extra content outside of the story mode, so... Yeah, the fact that the game is only supposed to go for about four hours is kind of bad in that sense. But anyway, we'll have a quick look around before we go into the actual stages. Now, as you can see, I've actually finished a fair few of the stages, but... Considering the game doesn't have an actual in-game clock, I can't tell you exactly how long I've been playing for. But it's probably anywhere between one and two hours. It's I haven't been playing very long at all. So, you do actually have a standalone avatar in this game, which is a... <laughs> seems like Sega making a bad problem worse, but we'll live with it. And the avatar actually has a couple of neat things you can do with it. You can actually change how he looks and, well, pretty much everything about him except his race. Your race actually gives you a unique ability, which is kind of neat. Uh, and the unique ability of the one I picked here, which is the bird, gives you a double jump, which is actually a pretty um, pretty neat ability. And there's a few others as well. Like, um, there's ones that'll uh, give you... Bugger, I can't remember any of them now. You'll, you'll see later on, because I'll have to do an SOS mission or two. And you also get to unlock plenty of things like accessories by playing through the game. You get them by doing some sort of objective. But there are actually bloody Persona 5 crossovers. You can see the mask, it's the Phan Phantom Thief mask. So you can actually play with the bloody Phantom Thief suit on if you want to, it's kind of neat. You get a ton of absolute, you get an absolute ton of stuff to customize your dude with here, but other than that, it's not that Impressive, you can save what outfits you want, and you can also change your Wizpon, which is your weapon. And as you can see, they all have their own unique attacks and abilities here. I actually quite like the cube, so we'll be sticking with it. But it chances are, if we play an SOS mission, we'll be able to play with some of the others anyway. But yeah, bird ability, do a double jump. So, here we go. There are also missions, which are basically just little things you can do to get extra clothes. And you can see examples of them here, there's not that much to see. And you also have daily missions, and if you do the daily missions, you will get an XP bonus. At least with these three missions here, I might give you something different later on, but yeah. Change your body parts, and you'll get 1.4 times bonus for 30 minutes. Which is actually a lot in this game, it can't make, make the difference between an A rank and an S rank. But we have an SOS mission to do down here, so I think we're going to give that a go, shall we? You can actually use a rental avatar in some missions, but it appears in this one that I can't. So I guess I just have to go through this with my regular avatar. There are multiple different kinds of stages in Sonic Forces. You've got these ones here, which are your avatar stages, which have a combination of boost stages and 2D stages. You also have Modern Sonic, which does... Oh, it's a random avatar, actually, by the looks of things. So, right, looks like I... Cut my bloody button to use my weapon already. Go me. But yeah, you've got a combination of these 3D stages, which I've heard called boost stages, so I'm just going to call them boost stages as well, because that's nice and convenient. And then you've also got these little 2D platforming segments that you go into, which are about the same thing, except in 2D. And you also get these with modern Sonic, except Sonic also has a... Instead of having the little weapon that you attack dudes with, you have a boost button that just makes you boost. 
These things have a special ability in the form of the burst meter, where if you press the X button when you collect one of those weird capsules, you'll get to do something like boost up in the air for a little bit. And I just got another one so I can demonstrate it again, but this time in two dimensions. You also have classic Sonic, which does nothing but... Whoop, went the wrong direction there. You also have classic Sonic, which does nothing but stay in two dimensions. And you've also got a couple of other stage types, like you've got special stages and you've also got... You've also got boss stages, which are... Oh, Bloody hell. I spent all that time getting all those rings and I walked straight into another... I walked straight into another one of those bloody robots. That seems to happen to me a lot recently. But yeah, it's a 2D crossed with 3D platformer based on speed. Sounds familiar, right? It is indeed the formula that the Sonic games have been working with for the past few years, at least the 3D ones anyway. And... Well, how does the formula work in this one? Well... I... It's, it's weird to explain, because you go between these two different modes so quickly that they do kind of feel like two halves of the same whole, but they are thoroughly different games in the middle as well. It's just really strange in the grand scheme of things, i got to tell you. Especially with the weird stuff, like, you know, having a bloody weapon in a Sonic game. It seems weird. But then again, I, I didn't play Sonic Boom. Apparently that game was even worse, but... It does a few weird things. But it remains pretty entertaining most of the way through. It is a bit weird. It's it, it's just a little bit unpolished in a fair few places, I gotta say. But for the most part, I'll say that I've been having fun with the game because I really have. Hey, I managed to get an S rank. Who would have thought? At least I didn't play die. You do apparently get medals, which are apparently like experience levels and. The more of those you get, the more clothes you'll get. Yay, I got to, I got some free clothes. Including what appears to be Woody's cowboy hat. And a pair of girl shoes. Man, the, the choice of clothes you get is really weird for being specific missions. But anyway, do I have another SOS mission to take on just yet, or are they going to leave that for now? No, I guess I'm going to the chemical plant. Going well with Operation Big Wave. Then everything fizzled out when that Phantom Ruby kicked in. That fake shadow was created using the Phantom oh, Ruby's power, right? Even if it's a virtual reality projection, it's as strong as the real shadow. Rouge, have you found the intel I was looking for? No, not yet. But I have reports that Eggman's database is located at the chemical plant. If we can check that out, we might find something there. That sounds like a promising lead. We have to figure out the secret behind Infinite's power and virtual reality. Tails, can you handle this? Got it. I'll take Sonic, I mean the other Sonic, with me and head to the chemical plant. There's a lot of things this game does weird and unpolished. Like... The 2D stages in particular feel really strange under the controller, even if you're using something like the D-pad to help out. So with Classic Sonic, you, you don't have your homing attack, but you do have the ability to do things like spin dashes. Spin dashing in this game is actually kind of weird. I mean, considering that I'm used to like old school Sonic, like um, Sonic Mania, it's a bit weird because you have to actually tap the... Tap the accelerate button, oh dear. You, ha you have to tap the jump button while you're holding down to accelerate, it's really odd. You do have these little tokens here that you can find in the levels. It it nice little things to help make the level replayable, and of course, playing the levels for things like faster times is also a neat idea. But it's pretty basic stuff otherwise, you get the drift. The controls in this mode feel annoyingly floaty, though. That's kind of my main problem with them. It can be really hard to be precise with your jumping because you seem to have a lot of built-up speed, which, to be fair, makes a, a little bit of sense. But it hurts a lot less in the 3D platforming than it does the 2D ones just because it makes slightly more sense there. And you also have this weird tendency to just turn around at random like you just saw me do. Thank God I didn't bother to actually charge up a spin dash. 
It's just odd, really. I'm not entirely sure why it reacts the way it does, but it does. It just makes the stages feel a little bit floaty and unresponsive the best of times, which is kind of unfortunate when you're trying to be quick about it. Well, at least I have oxygen bubbles to breathe down here. I remember how much of a pain in the ass this, these sorts of stages were back in, um, back in, what was it, Sonic 2? Oh, I might as well grab that while I'm here. It at least comes with the benefit that the majority of stages are really short and can be finished within a few minutes. Like, for example, that last stage I finished in like two something minutes. This stage here is pretty all the, over half out. Let me try that again. Over half done at this point. So, you never spend too long fiddling around in one stage, thankfully. You do have infinite continues, which is good as well. But it also does have that weird thing with the timer there, where, for whatever reason... It, it does have the weird thing with the timer, where for whatever reason, it if you die, your timer continues on when you respawn, but this will happen even during levels where you haven't even hit a checkpoint yet, which is a little odd, because you would think that the timer would reset if you were playing a level with no checkpoints, but it doesn't, and it's kind of strange to deal with there. More clothes. A bloody hockey mask right there. That'd make you look like a bit of a bit of a psycho killer, but then again, this is the Sonic fan base we're talking about. Who knows what they're capable of. So let's hope I get to play a Sonic stage next. It keeps the variety up, with the stages being so small. So, this is where the database is. Hold on a sec, while I access the data from this computer. Voice acting's not bad, but the story seems to be a bit not there at all. Like, they seem to... He's got like 10 terabytes of selfies. Okay, that one actually got me. I could... I could, I could see... I could see Eggman having 10 terabytes of selfies, but yeah. The story doesn't seem to be anything to do with anything. It just seems to be a bunch of somewhat random stages connected by the most paper-thin plot they could get. And Classic Sonic seems to be here for absolutely no reason whatsoever. But it's kind of... Yeah, it's just kind of not there. I'm mainly just focusing on the gameplay after hearing a few cutscenes of this. At least the voice acting's alright. It's nowhere near as bad as bloody Sonic Adventure. I, I don't feel the need to turn it off. And everybody's voiced, including some people that I've never even heard of. Oh, hey, it's a, um, twin stage. That's actually pretty cool. So we actually get the Sharp, uh, the Sonic and the Avatar stage just look like. Ooh, Metal Sonic. Is it another fake? Why would they bother making a fake out of something that already isn't real? Couldn't they just build more? Either way, it's getting wrecked. Let's go, partner. That might have been a knock at my door. Give me a sec. That wasn't a knock at my door. So, if we hit the Y button, we can actually ask for a rental avatar for this stage, which is kind of neat, because you can use a different avatar, and you can see all the different kinds of avatars here. Melvin. <laughs> oh, dear. Hold on to some rings after taking damage, draws items towards you. And he's got he's got an upgraded little weapon there as well. Like, look at all those abilities he's got on his weapon. That's actually kind of cool. I might actually take someone who has a protective shield and, you know, actually looks kind of decent. Although the head there always looks a little bit derpy. You can, of course, also see leaderboards. Let's see who is the fastest right now. Yoth the full pet. How the fuck do you say that? Never mind, let's just go and play the actual level. I will say though, the 3D boost stages where you've got the camera behind you and you're running like a bat out of hell are my favorites, mainly because the control scheme. Oh, for God's sake, we don't even start on that! Or do we? Strange, I don't see him anywhere. That was a close one. That was a bit odd. There we go. Oh, 
I was gonna say the 3D boost stages are some of my favorites because they look absolutely fantastic, but this this is also a pretty good visual showpiece as well right here. And yeah, it is, does actually start with a 3D boost stage, but yeah. These 3D boost stages are my favorites, mainly because... Oh, it is actually a boss fight against Metal Sonic. Awesome. I don't have to show off a boss fight. But yeah, these 3D boost stages are often my favorite, just because... They look fantastic. Like, even for the Switch, this looks surprisingly good. Also, I do have the ability to boost here by holding the Y button, which I will do to see if I can catch up. And I missed the opportunity by far. There's all your, um... There's all your red stars, by the way. If I press ZL, I can actually swap to the rental avatar, who has all the extra abilities. And I started out with a protective shield, thank god. Now I can take all of these out, and let's see if that actually lets me hit Metal Sonic himself. Does not. Unfortunate. But yeah, as I was saying, these stages look fantastic. They they have a great they have great just display. But let me try that again. They have great technical prowess. They look they look really good. And they move really smoothly too. I haven't noticed anything major in the way of frame rate drops in this game, so It really does just look like the bee's knees. Fantastic level of presentation going on here. Such a shame that there isn't going to be that many stages because the game's only four hours long. It's a shame that this, all this tech here takes so much money to actually build because, good lord. There we go. He's going to change after this because they always change for a second phase at the halfway point. But yeah, the controls in this mode are actually really smooth as well. I mean, you, all you've got to worry about is moving forward, usually doing a homing attack or two, and boosting. And you do also have the ability to do a quick strafe on the shoulder buttons if you need to, and you do even have the gun here for when you do need it, which is pretty cool. So if you're going to run into like a column of dudes, just fire away, they'll die. Oh uh, yes, that's a much cleaner way of um, taking these bastards out. Woo! There we go. But yeah, the um, 3D boost stages in this game just overall are absolutely great. I find myself being really impressed with them every time. I know they're... They are relatively linear set pieces with not that much to not that much to do in the way of game. Oh, oh, you have to beat him within a certain time limit, do you? That's a bit sucky. Oh uh, well, let's give that another shot, shall we? Don't actually have my sound on, so if it was warning me, I didn't hear it. All oh, right, I'm using cube on this one. Shit, right? Let's go back to burst. The game doesn't have too much in the way of replayability, which kind of disappoints me. It's kind of annoying like that, just because, um... Oh. Well, that was more annoying than it really should have been, but... There we go. There isn't that much replayability outside of looking for the... Let's just get out of the way of this. Outside of looking for the five stars in every every level. I mean, sure, you do have the SOS missions, but those are literally playing the same level. More or less over and over again, just because... Just because that's what the game wants you to do. Oh, you got away again. God damn it. 
Need to try and be faster about this. Yeah, not much replayability in the way of, well, pretty much anything when you think about it. There's not really that much you can... There's not really that much to do. Which kind of sucks. And considering that the levels are pretty much going to be one and done, unless you like to play the levels over and over again for, um... Not speedrunning purposes or anything like that, but... Oh, come on, you gotta be kidding me. There we go. Now you're dead. Here goes, partner. When we join forces, the sky's the limit. Or not. Oop. Double boost time. Double boost. Yeah, we chase the su we chase the sucker down. Why the hell not? Oh, he's another one of those um, VR projections. That's pretty cool. We'll play one more level and wrap it up. I did terribly there, if you couldn't tell, but I still got a rank B out of it, which is kind of nice. Most of the bosses I fought are pretty, pretty great. fun. Ooh. We're like a well-oiled machine, fighting a well-oiled machine. Huh? Was that it for the three days? Okay, they're usually a lot longer than that. I wonder why that happened, but yeah, uh, most of the bosses I fought in this game are pretty fun in and of themselves. Pre pretty good time, more or less. Oh hey, I got a secret stage again. That's kind of cool. Do I have anything in the way of a SOS stage? I oh, well, I saw one back there, but it's not on a stage I want to play on. I think I'll play on a um, Sonic stage. Just a pure Sonic stage. So it's a bit unpolished and the story is basically nothingness and well it's also got <laughs> really really bad music sometimes like it they love their weird unbelievably depressing weird pop-ish songs. It just, it, it makes, it gives the game a particular tone that I can only really say is properly Sonic, which I gotta admit, ever since like I played Sonic R, the PC port of Sonic R, which is not exactly something that I would expect to have on my, on my gaming record, we'll put it that way. It just feel, it feels like Sonic, the whole musical choice and all that, it all feels like Sonic. Even though I haven't actually played that much one Sonic, despite my my favorite um, my favorite Sonic game is probably Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which is certainly something I gotta say. But yeah, Sonic Wars isn't that, isn't that bad. I am enjoying it more than I was expecting to, especially after hearing the first couple of reviews. I mean, nobody trusts for me to reviews for anything, but. After having played a fair bit of it, having played all the different kinds of stages, being a little bit disappointed with the platforming stages, but thoroughly enjoying the 3D boost stages we got going on here, because this is great. Look at all that fucking speed! Also quick time events, which honestly aren't the worst thing in the world. But yeah, I, I'm actually really enjoying it. It feels like... It feels like a really nice implementation. Note, I've never played Sonic Colors or Sonic Generations, but... Yeah, I'm enjoying it a lot. I think it's pretty great. While I wouldn't... While I wouldn't say to go out and buy it at full price, because I think it's still a little bit unpolished and probably a little bit short for just that, 
I am still enjoying it a lot. Oh hey, it's a chow backpack! I kind of like that, actually. I do think it's a little unpolished, and since it's only going to be four hours long, I think it's a little bit too short to spend 45 bucks US on. But, like, if it goes on sale for something like 30 bucks, and you're just looking for a neat little 2D, 3D platformer that also has a ton of speed behind it, you could do a lot worse than this. I think it's pretty good. Not fantastic, not worth 45 bucks, but 30 or less? Sure. Why not? This has been Blue Maxima, and I will see you all next time.